I know you've had a talk on osteoporosis, but it is important um, to remember your osteoporosis risk factors. Sit down, perhaps think about how much caffeine you're drinking and how much that may have a detriment to your bone health, how much alcohol you're drinking, once again, a detriment to the um, bone health. How much of a sedentary life you have? Are you underweight? Are you smoking? And now you are having a low calcium and vitamin D diet. And this is time once again for you to just reflect on some of the things that you can do that will reduce your osteoporosis and improve your bone health. Um, a few weeks or months ago, we did some work here in Portsmouth and we got a lot of um, criticism for the fact that we talked about dairy products as being the key um, supplier of calcium in your diet. Of course, there are many other foods out there that are high in um, calcium that are non-dairy products. Um, so if you are dairy intolerant or you have beliefs that you don't want to um, cause problems through drinking milk, then do look through the um, Nat Royal Osteoporosis Society, have a really good information sheet on non-dairy products that are rich in calcium. But remember, this time of year, we start to lose vitamin D. Um, we've absorbed um, sufficient vitamin D, hopefully through the summer months. And that's very dependent on where you live in the UK, the amount of sun exposure you have. But if you start off the winter periods with a very low vitamin D level, you will find that you deplete quite quickly. So looking at how else you can top your vitamin D up through food is really key because you do need that vitamin D um, level to allow you to absorb calcium from your diet. And once again, the Royal Osteoporosis Society produced a very good information leaf for people about healthy diet for people living with osteoporosis or at risk of osteoporosis and bone health issues. If you've had one fracture, and this is a, a very um, different pattern of how healthcare is provided across the UK, hopefully most people nowadays, if they break a fracture, through what's called a fragility fracture, maybe um, a fracture of a wrist or a, a, a limb following a low trauma fracture, say falling from a chair or just falling from a standing height. If you've had one fracture and you're over the age of 50, hopefully you will have been picked up by a fracture liaison service. If you don't have a fracture liaison service locally, then you do need to perhaps have a conversation with your GP about your osteoporosis risks. And there are some simple tools online from the Royal Osteoporosis Society that help, can help you determine whether your fracture may have been as a result of osteoporosis weakness in the bone. But don't get into the, um, the downward spiral of fracturing one bone, but don't, don't, not doing anything about it and then having a subsequent fracture maybe six months to a year down the line. Of course, if you've got other risk factors, so you've got celiac disease, um, inflammatory bowel disease, the age of 50 is just a, a guideline, and it may be that once again, if you're fracturing and you're in the ages of 40s, you may need to have a conversation with your healthcare professional about your bone health. So don't let one fracture stop you having a, a worthwhile conversation with a healthcare professional. And once again, the Royal Osteoporosis Society are very good at giving anyone advice about bone health and low trauma fractures. <laughs> 